Hi. Uh, so recently I have been getting emails about uh, Canva code and apparently some teachers are uh, struggling with uh, how to use it to create interactive games. So I decided to create this quick video to show you how to use Canva code. And for those of you who are new to Canva code, this is an AI powered feature in Canva that allows you to create different interactive materials, not only games, but also activities, quizzes, uh, or graphic organizers, you name it. And so the process is very easy. You don't need to write any line of code. So Canva code does it all for you. All you need is a very clear and well structured prompt. So I'm going to walk you through the process of how to use Canva code to create an interactive vocabulary matching game. So the first thing you need to uh, to have is to write a prompt and decide which kind of game you want. And the prompt needs to be uh, detailed enough so that Canva code can I mean, provide you with the desired output. And and by the way, you will need a few trails before you can get Canva code to uh, generate the game you want. But the process, as I said, is very easy. You always have the option to engage with Canva code in back and forth uh, kind of conversation. You can ask it to edit the layout, the design, uh, things and stuff like that. So we will see how uh, I used it to create this interactive uh, vocabulary matching game. So the first thing to do is to go ahead to uh, Canva uh, and uh, click on Canva AI and then click on code for me. And so once you click on code for me, you will be directed to a page like this one here. As you can see here, this is the interactive uh, vocabulary matching game I have uh, used for this demo. And so I will show you the first prompt I used here, I created the first prompt using ChatGPT. And so I said, create an interactive matching game for year nine social studies. The game should have eight vocabulary terms with their definitions related to government and citizenship. Students drag and drop terms to match them up with the correct definition. Keep the activity simple with one list of terms on the left and definitions on the right. Provide immediate feedback when a match is made and a final score at the end. So that's the prompt for the game. And then after a few seconds, uh, Canva code uh, uh, generated this first version here. You see it right here. And so the problem with the first version of the game, as you can see, is the terms are on top of the definitions. So I don't want this vertical kind of design. I want to have two columns, one for the terms and the other one for for the definition so that students can find it easy to just drag a term and drop it into the definition. And for this to work, we need a two columns layout. So now I gave it another prompt, uh, instructing it to redesign the game into a two column layout. As you can see here, the prompt, you can always stop the video and go through the prompt. And they said, display all the terms in the left column and all the definitions in the right column and so on. And a few after a few seconds again, I have another version, which is version two. So it's not, there is not much, I mean, difference between the two. Uh, Canva code still didn't get it right. And I still have this vertical kind of layout, which I don't want. And so I provided another prompt again, telling it to uh, redo the design of the game and provide me with two columns. That's the prompt I used. And after a few seconds, I have version number three. And now Canva uh, code seems to provide the right design. And when I scroll now, you can see we have another problem is, look at here on the left, the column for the terms, it, when I scroll down, it disappears. And because the column on the right with the definitions is too long. And so I want this column here on the left for the terms to be fixed and pinned so that when I scroll, it stays there fixed and only this column of definitions, it scrolls down and up. So I instructed Canva code again. Here is the prompt I use. I said, update the layout of the matching game, keep the terms column fixed, always visible on the left, and then make only the definitions column on the right scrollable so students can drag terms across without losing sight of the word list. So I always go back and forth between ChatGPT and Canva code. ChatGPT helps me with articulating my idea as well. And so I use those uh, prompts to uh, and they feed them into Canva code. And so I have another version, which is now version number four. 
let's see what Canva code provided here. You can see here, it still did not fix the problem of the uh, column on the left-hand side. It is still not yet pinned or fixed. It still goes and up. And so I provided another prompt to uh, telling it to uh, update the layout again and keep the terms column fixed and stuff like that. After a few seconds, I have version number five. And now I have the uh, uh, design I want, but the problem is you see, you see here, this line here, I don't know why Canva code have this kind of awkward looking line on the middle. So I instructed again to redo the design and I have now version number six. And finally, you see here, it's the uh, sixth version that I get the uh, Canva code to provide me with the uh, right design for the game I I want. And so now, as you can see, uh, the columns on the left is pinned, it's fixed. And here, the column on the right, you can scroll up and down. And that's exactly what I want. Now that I have the layout of the game as I wanted it, so now I wanted to kind of uh, edit the uh, kind of the design of, of, of the whole game and the aesthetics, play on the aesthetics. So I have a prompt here and they said, add extra features to the matching game, like a celebratory message, like well done, you're a vocab master that students get when they complete the game. And then I also tell it to add a score summary showing how many matches were correct out of the total and a restart game button so students can try again. Again, you can always stop the video and read the prompt. And now after adding these, uh, uh, this prompt, uh, Canva code took it a few seconds and then I have number seven. So that's the final version that I am really uh, satisfied with. And you can see here, I have the game, I have the left column, and I have the right column and you can scroll up and down. And now let's see, let's, let's test this game here. All right. So I'll just, uh, go ahead and test it. And now the last one here, and you can see here, uh, the celebratory message that I told it to create. So we have, well done, you're a vocab master. And then we have the button to download the score and we have the restore, uh, restart game and we have the number of correct matches and the final score. And so it did a, an, an excellent job creating this matching game. And all it takes me is around 10 to 12 minutes from the start, from the first prompt till the seventh version. And it's really amazing what Canva code can do I mean, without you having to write a single line of code. And if you want to use such a game with your students, you can go ahead and click on uh, use in a design and then click on presentation and then click on share and you can share it as a link with uh, your students and they can click on the link and they can work on the game. They don't even have to uh, uh, log into Canva. Very easy, very simple, and it's really, it has a huge educational potential. And as I said, you can create a lot of things with it. It's not only games, you can also create interactive materials to use in your teaching. So if you have not yet tried Canva code, I highly recommend giving it a try and see. Thanks for watching.